Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy and in today's tutorial we're going to be going over how to make a shadows on and off button in Roblox Studio. So you most commonly see these shadow buttons inside of more high detailed games which include a lot of parts or simply you add it into your game for lower end devices. Now this is going to be an option that could either be just on your side of your screen or could be maybe in your settings menu inside of your Roblox game. And this will basically be a button where you can enable and then disable shadows inside of your Roblox game for that specific client. So if player one wanted, okay I don't want any shadows in the game, they can click the button, the shadows will disappear for them, but on player two's account, player two uh, gameplay, they will still have the shadows. So it is a client-sided script, meaning it is only gonna affect the person who actually goes and adjusts it, and it doesn't affect every single other person inside of the game. So these types of systems are usually used to tackle lag and the amount of ping that is on a player's device. So for me, personally, disabling the shadows or keeping the shadows enabled didn't actually adjust my ping much. It adjusted it by one or two ping, but I mean that's so minimal. But compared to more a, a more lower end device, such as like an old mobile phone or an old computer, you'll then start to see quite a bit of a difference, especially if you are receiving a large amount of lag already. The sh disabling the shadows can then take the pressure off the system and then your lag will slowly reduce because now the game is not having to also implement shadows inside of the game. So the shadows button can prevent and help with lag inside of your Roblox experience. So for starters we want to make sure our explorer and properties are enabled. If our explorer and properties are not enabled head up to the top bar here click on view and enable explorer and properties and they should show up somewhere over your screen. So now that we've enabled our explorer in properties, we want to head over here and now we want to actually go and insert the things that are going to be inside of our game, which are going to be showing us the shadows. So obviously you probably already have your main buildings or your main models which have shadows, but for me I don't have anything inside of this base plate. So I'm just going to quickly go and create some designs here of items that can represent shadows. Now a shadow is that dark area right there because the sun is pointing down and this the, the block is blocking the sun from that area and that's what creates a shadow. So you can see the more I move it along, the shadow expands. The more I uh, make it smaller, the less shadow there is. So I'm just gonna go and make it like that and obviously the higher the, um, the part, the more area it's gonna be blocking the sun from. So we'll go and make it like that. I'm gonna go and add a little couple more parts here just so you can still get a good idea on what exactly is going on and we'll go and put uh, one like that there we go that can those can be representing our shadows there just like that perfect so these are going to be our main buildings that we're going to see when we disable the shadows that shadow is going to be disabled and when the shadows are enabled this shadow will show right here so the shadows are currently showing so now that we've gone and inserted our models or buildings or whatever and you've got your shadows there inside of the game and they are currently enabled, you want to head over here to your starter GUI, click on the plus button and insert a screen GUI. We're just going to make a very simple button on the side of our screen. Depending where you want this button, you can go and choose that where, uh, where you would like it. If you want it in a different GUI, you can go, go and put it there. You just need the text button and then the local script. So go and insert a screen GUI, click on the plus button and I'm going to insert a frame which is going to go across the entire screen and then we're going to have a background transparency of one and then I'm going to click on the plus button and insert a text button. This is going to be our button that the player is going to be clicking to change the shadows or sorry should I say enabling the shadows and then also disabling the shadows. So go and customize your button here. I'm just going to make it very simple. I'm just going to go text scaled, change the font to something a little bit better. And then for now, we can go and leave the text as just button. We'll come back to that in a little bit, and then we can go and change that here. So leave it just like that. Go and customize your button. Do whatever you want with it. You can change the text now if you want, but I'll explain more on what you can change your text to here shortly. So now that we've got our main button created, we then want to click on the plus button and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of our text button that the player is going to be clicking, you want to go down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in the description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code and then paste in the new code. Now the script here that we've got is very simple and quite straightforward so I'm just going to quickly go over it here with you and then you are able to adjust a couple of things here but I'll go through those over here in a minute. So on line one it goes local GUI, uh, local GUI equals script.parent so our GUI is our text button so that is script dot the parent so it goes the script then to the parent which is then our text button and that is our GUI. 
GUI dot mouse button one click. This basically means when the GUI is clicked, it then goes and creates a function. So if the GUI is clicked, it'll then go and create a function. If game dot lighting dot global shadows equals equals false, then GUI dot text equals turn shadows off. So now basically what is happening here, where you can actually go and adjust the global shadows is over here in the lighting area inside of your Explorer. So not in the workspace, not in server storage, in the lighting folder right here inside of the properties of the lighting. You have to see global shadows. Now what we are adjusting is this property right here called global shadows. And now this currently is true, meaning yes, there are shadows, but if this is false, then you can see there is no shadows. So if you're just wanting your game to actually have zero shadows at all, you can either adjust that in the main part where it says cast shadow in the properties, or you can actually go and adjust it for every single part inside of the game, you can turn off global shadows. And that basically removes any shadow inside of the game. But we're gonna keep that as false, uh, sorry, true, simply because we want our shadows to be showing when we first join into the game, and then the player can go and adjust it from there on. So as you just saw of our lighting properties, that's what we're adjusting right here. If game.lighting.global shadow, so game, then to our lighting folder, then to our property global shadows, equals equals false, then basically what this is doing, this is kind of changing it. So if it is false, then this is going to happen. So if game.lighting.global shadows equals equals false, then GUI.text is going to be changing to that. So our GUI text is going to be changing to turn shadows off. So meaning our shadows are currently on if this text is showing. Then it goes game.lighting.global shadows equals not game.lighting.global shadows. This is basically like a, I guess you could say, determining which one is false and which one's true. Else, so if the if it is not true, or sorry, if it is not false, then GUI.text is going to turn to turn shadows on, basically meaning our shadows are currently off, and that then the GUI text is going to change to turn shadows on, basically showing the player, oh, you can now go and turn on the shadows. Then it goes game.lighting.global shadows equals uh, not game.lighting.global shadows. So this basically controls when and if the global shadows are true or false. It's kind of like a bit of an off on and off switch because that's basically what is happening here with the GUI. If I click this button, they will, because now when, we, when we're in the game, now when we join in, your, our shadows are currently enabled. So if I click on this uh, then, then our shadows are gonna be disabled and then the text is gonna show there saying, turn shadows on. And then when our shadows are on, then it is going to be showing turn shadows off inside of the text button text. So depending on which one, um, or should I say, if your shadows are enabled or disabled, will depend on what sort of text is there. So if you want to go and change the text that is there, you can adjust that right here. We're in the green text between the punctuation marks or the quotation marks as some people call them. So you can adjust that right here. So I've got it to turn shadows off and then turn shadows on. So now, because we are starting our game with shadows enabled, we want to go and change our text button here to turn shadows off simply because when we join into the game, our, this is not going to be this is not going to be running basically meaning this is not going to be changing any of our text before we join into the game. So what we need to do, we need to go and adjust it accordingly. So when we first join into the game, is your shadows going to be enabled or disabled? If your shadows are going to be enabled like it is now, you're going to be changing your text to turn shadows um, turn shadows off just like that and uh, actually I'll do it similar to what we have there turn shadows off and then this is going to be turning our shadows off if we go click it now depending if you went and made it so when the player joins into the game the shadows are already disabled you'd go and go and change the text here to turn shadows on so we're going to leave it just like that because we're going to keep our shadows enabled when we join in but now that is all you need to go and do so if you've got everything and you've gone and adjusted it to how you would like click on the x button up here next to your local script and then go click on play to go and test it out as you guys can see, we've spawned on top of the parts here, but uh, I mean, that's all right. So what we could go do here now, as you guys can see, oh, and I forgot to anchor the parts, hence why that one's not floating around anymore. But this can kind of give you a bit of a good demonstration here. So now our shadows are currently enabled, but now if we go and click on the button here that says turn shadows off, it is now going to disable all the shadows inside of the base plate. And as you guys can see, our text button text has turned to turn shadows on, basically allowing the player to turn back on the shadows. So let's say, okay, I want the shadows back on now. I go and click on this button. 
the shadows now are enabled and then the text goes and changes to turn shadows off basically allowing the player to go and turn off the shadows again so the exact same thing here works if you're inside of a server. So I've got player one and player two here in the testing place. And now because it is a client-sided script, a local script, if I go and change, turn off the shadows here in player one, you're able to see it does not affect anything inside of player two's experience. Same thing if I go turn them back on and I do it on player two's account, you can see it doesn't actually affect player one at all, but it does affect our player two that just went and disabled the thing. I can do the exact same thing. Let's say I wanted, oh, player one now wants the shadows off. You're able to see now I can also disable the shadows at the exact same time as player two. And let's say player two wanted to go and turn them back on now. Oh, I now have shadows again. As you guys can see, the shadows are there. And then this is what it looks like without the shadows. So this basically allows anyone inside of the server to go and turn the shadows on and off whenever they would like. And just like that, you have now gone and created a shadows on and off button inside of Roblox Studio. If you guys are a little bit lost or you don't really know what you're doing, feel free to create a ticket in my Discord server and we can happily help you out. But anyway guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell, and also if you really did enjoy, please do make sure to consider liking the video, it would mean a lot. But anyway, have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.